You've always been so kind to do this show since early on in the pandemic, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I, it, it means so much to us. It is my pleasure. <laughs> you are so warm and so generous and so authentic. You just get a chance to be in the presence of someone who has a real conversation and you're present. You're not anywhere else other than right here. And I feel that. Yeah. And I thank you. Right. I appreciate it. Um, may I ask, this yes. was not in the questions, but you know, I, I go rogue all the time. Go for it, go for it. Why are your hands so soft? I moisturize. When you are black and you're a deeper shade of soul, if you walk around unmoisturized, it's called not a good look. <laughs> Hands look dry and crusty, and it's not, no, no bueno. I don't think I've ever felt skin this nubile, that. smooth, Come on now. beautiful. You like stop. you, I mean, really, just, oh my gosh. <laughs> I was looking at your career, and I had a question, which okay. was you are at the biggest height of your career awards, Academy Award nominations. Yeah. You do the people versus OJ. Yeah. And then this is us. Yeah. And now American fiction, which I am so obsessed with, and it's my favorite movie. And I love it so much. Thank you. And like, it's fun. It's, it's like you're in your shirt off this entire movie. Thank you for that. I couldn't have um, yeah. You know, and your beautiful wife, uh, Ryan Michelle Bathay, who comes here um, yes. from time to time. Um, yes. Like, you know, in fact, did those soft hands actually give birth to one of your children? Yeah. How and why did that come about? Because Ryan Michelle Bathay, a.k.a. Fertile Myrtle, didn't waste any time. Her first contraction was at 11 p.m. Um, Andrew came into the world at 2.23 a.m., right? So three hours and 23 minutes later. And the doula was like, yo, make sure mommy gets plenty of rest. She's in for a big day tomorrow. And she's laying in bed saying, like, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to go to the bathroom. One time she crawls out of the bathroom and she goes, I think I'm crowning. And I mansplained to her, oh, sweetheart, you can't be crowning. It's way too soon. <laughs> you... And I looked in between her legs and the baby's head was all the way out. <laughs> Drew, is the head scrunched up like this? <laughs> right? She pushed, his little body wriggled out. Look, she cried, he <laughs> That is the most incredible life experience I think we humans could ever experience. Yeah. And you, you had a really strong relationship with your father. I did. And when you're having a moment like that, and you're this father who literally just gave birth to your child. Yeah. Do you think about him in that moment? Don't you do that, Drew Barrymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, you do. And uh, Sterling Brown Jr. is my dad, and I love him very much. He, he passed away when I was 10, almost 11 but I have this reservoir of love that is just a deep well inside of me. And I get a chance to share that with these two beautiful boys that I have right now, so. Two boys. Yeah. You know, something I heard about you and your father also is that you guys used to watch a lot of movies and TV together. Sure. And the fact that you are working in this business does that reconnect you with him? It absolutely does. I probably, if he didn't love it the way that he did, I probably wouldn't be doing it. I think on a conscious or subconscious level, I do things to feel connected to my dad. I could remember every day of the week, there'd be a certain show, like The Fall Guy came on Mondays. Oh, I love The Fall Guy. You know, guy. Saturdays was uh, Fantasy Island. Oh, and Tattoo! The love boat, you know, The Plane, The Plane. The Plane, The Plane! All that kind of stuff. So like, when I remember watching them with him, and sort of the joy that we derived as a family, as, as a father and son. I mean, I remember when the cable man came to the house and he said, little boy, is your dad here? And we got all four channels, which was Cinemax, Showtime, the movie channel, and HBO. And the brown box. The brown box. And me and my dad on Friday nights would watch Cinemax, and he'd be like, don't tell your mama we're watching this. Yep. <laughs> and it was just good times. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it was such a warm feeling of like, oh, he loves me, and he wants to share this thing with me. 
the fact that I get a chance to do this thing that he loved so much, like I feel his smile all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have an Oscar nomination. Yeah. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, American Fiction is one of the greatest films I've ever seen in the history of cinema. It goes to places I've never seen, uh, some cinematic mechanisms. Um, things are played out in imagination, but in a real yes, way. I've yes, never yes, seen yes, that yes. before. That's a pretty awesome scene. Yeah, I love that. It, do, it's hard to find something new, to yeah. do something that's not been done. It's so original. Yeah. How did you guys manage to tell the story that you do, yeah. which I feel has been one of the most informative I've ever seen that leaves you feeling so whole and, and happy.